Hi there, my name is Dave and Dave got a new watch in the mail today. This should be the Red Star Bullhead Chronograph with the Seagull 1901 chrono movement in it. And uh, yeah, so this is an unboxing. There's not a whole lot on the old YouTube about this watch yet, so why not? Came pretty fast, a couple of weeks. Pretty happy with that. I paid, I'm in Canada here, so I paid uh, $330 and I think that was $245 US with free shipping and that was the best price I could find. The good news out of the gate is it got here. And uh, <clears throat> first thing I noticed is that everything I saw, uh, I said it wasn't much on the internet about it, but it was coming in a small flat metal box with two straps. Now, this is not a small flat metal box, but already I'm liking it because it looks like a normal watch box and the other one would have done, but this looks okay. Kind of uh, almost a rubbery feel to the outside, red star. I like it. So, let's have a look. That's what we see. This is my first unboxing, and I'm not a video editing guy or any of that type of thing. So they have a couple of sheets of information, how to wind and take care, and wind daily, wind consistently, wind when it is taken offhand, stay clear of strong magnetic field, avoid extreme temperature. Start. They put quite a lot of <laughs> chatting. Uh, And underlining the upper right button is press to start, stop function. Lower right button is press to reset after you've stopped. And, uh, you know, we all know that. Don't wreck your watch. Um, well, it says the diameter of this watch is 37.5 millimeters, which is uh, very distressing. If that's the case, the watch I bought was supposed to be 42. But let's have a look. As a stainless steel strap comes with a spare leather blue strap that uh, is nice, nice looking. Um, one of the things that I almost didn't buy the watch for was because it says it has an 18 millimeter lug size and that's not for me, yeah, it's very small these days. And then I see what they've done is they've adapted the strap which I like a lot, that's fine, that's a very good thing to do. So they've made it as wider, more like a 22 or something. And uh, that's great. So now it has the appearance of a nice thick beefy strap. Let's get to it. I don't have a measuring unit down here, I should have brought one, sorry. But I don't, I think it is 42. There we go. It's pretty nice dial. I don't know how close I can get it in focus. Um, I'm an old guy that wears glasses only, you know, to read or something. So when I look down at my wristwatch, I usually can't use a chronograph. But this is uh, very striking. The contrast with the hands and the very light subdials is great. I can see that. It's pretty nice. It will go on the leather strap. I'm a leather strap guy for sure. But uh, anyway, exhibition back. And uh, allegedly, you know, an upgrade in the head the gooseneck uh, regulator in it. I mean, <clears throat> that's a Chinese strap. It's for, you know, it's got the star on it. 
stamped. It's just, I never wear them. I always wear leather. It's got a uh, onion crown, which is not something I particularly mind at all. I like. I've had a few aviator watches, sort of vintage style, with onion crowns, and I like them. But the one thing you do find is that they will uh, dig into your wrist. Uh, so this is for the bullhead thing. It's the first time I've owned a watch like this. It uh, takes care of that completely. Smooth size, buttons up here. I really like the idea of having a bullhead chronograph. It's just different from what most people are wearing. Uh, so I gave it a wind and it's running. And what they've done here, um, so there's the 1963 Chinese chronograph that is very, very popular. And I wouldn't mind having one of those, but a friend of mine bought one. I didn't want to buy the same watch. So then I saw this and went, hey, that solves that problem. So what they've done is they've, on this 1963, the subdials are on the side at uh, 9 and 3. And uh, they've taken this exact same movement without doing anything. You just simply flipped it up this way, which is fine. And uh, then just altered the subdials accordingly. So let's push a button and see what happens. Nice. Uh, it's a really good dial. I like the dial. I'm very picky. I like simplicity. And the uh, red chrono hand here stands out very nicely. Stop. Maybe it's that stand on. I like it. I like the look. It's got plastic on the dial here. I could probably get a take that off. Uh, I like the red star. Just the red star. It's very nice. So, yeah. So, we have unboxed. It came in this green box, which I do prefer to the little tin box they had. Uh, this is far more serviceable. Easier to store with my other watches and the like. Um, pillow. Spare strap. $330 for really a pretty nice chronograph. And, you know, the reputation of these movements is getting really good. I've had uh, the Alpha version, which is the SG2903 movement with three subdials. I've had this watch for close to 15 years and you know, I don't wear it every day, but every time I pick it up, it works perfectly. Uh, my watchmaker looked at it and went, I don't know how they do it. Uh, never had a problem with it. And this was $125 when I bought it. Very happy with this. Money well spent for the old collection. Anyway, thanks for watching. Sorry about the low tech.